we are looking at the subject of keys to accelerating prophetic fulfillment because today we are trusting the Lord to get to the establishment of his word to us in Joshua chapter 21 and in verse 45 he said they are filled not out of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel all came to pass they are filled not out of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel all came to pass God has spoken to us extensively this year he showed us that it is our year of greater glory that is to make us to see everything that the glory of God entails this year in a greater dimension that is, we are going to be seeing the greater manifestations of the presence and the person of God. That we are going to see the greater manifestations of the almightiness, the bigness of God, which we have already started seeing. We are going to see the greater manifestations of the goodness of God. We are going to see greater manifestations of the honor and the dignity of God. And that shame will be swallowed and reproach will be swallowed. That we are going to see the greater manifestations of the revelations or the light of God. Insight like never before. We are going to see greater manifestations of the supplies of God. The flow of divine resources. The wealth of God to his people. Through his people. We are going to see such greater manifestations this year. And then also we are going to see the greater manifestations of the peace of God. Where we have tranquility, serenity, we have equanimity, we have nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing lacking. We are going to see the greater dimensions of those this year. If you believe that, say louder, amen. Now it is one thing for it to be prophesied. It is another thing for it to be realized. Now if you look at the book of Ezekiel chapter 12 there was a parable that Ezekiel was given in, 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 in chapter in, in verse 21 Ezekiel chapter 12 verse 21 and the word of the Lord came unto me saying son of man what is this proverb that you have in the line of, in the land of Israel saying the days are prolonged and every vision fail it. You can stop there. The days are pro you can stop there. The days are prolonged, and every vision fail it. Why is it that prophecy is not coming to pass as they should? Why is it that the vision, the revelation, seem to have to be delayed? Why are why is this proverb going on like that? Everybody at one time or the other may, in one way or the other, experience some form of delay in what you are expecting, in what you think God has spoken to you about, or what you are so sure will happen tomorrow, and, and the tomorrow becomes one month. But he said in the next verse, in verse 13, he said, Thus saith the Lord, tell them therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease. That is, every vision fill it and the days are prolonged. I will make that kind of talk to cease. And they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, the days are at hand and the effect of every vision. In other words, in the season where we are in, whether it is for Nigeria or for our church or for our lives, visions shall not tarry anymore. Visions shall not be delayed anymore. Prophecies shall not be delayed anymore they shall come to pass with accuracy they shall come to pass with rapidity you believe and shout the loudest amen but every prophecy places upon man some responsibilities now what are these number one 
believe how do you accelerate prophetic fulfillment number one believe the prophecy and the prophet or the other way believe the prophet and the prophecy second chronicles chapter 20 and in verse 20 b and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of tekoa and as they went forth jehoshaphat stood and said hear me o judah and ye inhabitants of jerusalem believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established believe in his prophets so shall you prosper believe in the prophet so shall you prosper believe in the prophet means believe in the prophecy so shall you prosper so shall what they said flourish you cannot benefit from the prophecy of a prophet you doubt in fact don't ever allow anybody you doubt pray for you because it's a waste of prayer believe means i agree I agree this is mine you don't look you don't look or think in terms of oh I have heard a thing like this before oh last year the word came in January uh, it was our open door I thought that my door was going to be open no you don't talk like that you, be, you take it, you take it raw and eat it whole. I believe it. That is my word. If it will not happen for anybody at all, it must happen for me. You believe in the prophet, you believe in the prophecy. I am telling you there are people online who watch and people who watch via the satellite, the internet, who receive the prophetic word, who believe the prophetic word and who, who experience the prophetic word. You have no reason why your case should be different somebody say aloud amen believe the prophet and the prophecy number two celebrate and praise celebrate and praise god Let me rephrase it. Celebrate and praise God for the prophetic fulfillment. Celebrate and praise God in advance for the prophetic fulfillment or for the or for the or for the prophecy's fulfillment. Another way to say it is celebrate the prophecy into fulfillment celebrate it as if it has happened celebrate the prophecy into fulfillment in second chronicles chapter 20 you know how the children of israel were surrounded with the army of so many nations second chronicles chapter 20 and in verse 12 second chronicles chapter 20 and in verse 12 oh our god will you not judge them judge who judge the ammonites the edomites and the ammonites judge the ammonites the edomites and the moabites he said for we have no might against this great company that cometh against us neither know we what to do but our eyes are upon thee and all judah stood before the lord with their little ones their wives and their children then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Haki, all Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go against them behold they are coming by the cliff of this the prophecy was giving them direction and revelation the people looking for you they are coming at that angle they are coming by the cliff of this you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of jeruel you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. Now how will they bring that prophecy to pass? Here is it. And the Levites of the sons of Kohath 
Korahites. And of the children of the Korahites, they stood up to praise the Lord God with a loud voice. The word has come. Before the fulfillment happens, let us praise it into manifestation. Look, go to verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. Now, a prophecy has come that I don't need to fight. God will fight. So how do I see the fulfillment? He appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And while they were praising, the Lord began the fight. Many of us are worried, want to worry the prophecy into happening. You don't, you don't worry it into happening. You worship it into fulfillment. You don't worry the prophecy into fulfillment. You, you worship it into fulfillment. Am I communicating at all? So, so it is very, very important that between the prophetic release and the prophetic realization is the prophetic celebration. Between the prophetic declaration and the prophetic manifestation is the prophetic celebration. Again, be between the prophetic declaration and the prophetic manifestation is a prophetic celebration. Make up your mind to celebrate and dance like it has happened. That is why we say at times, how will you celebrate if God gives you your wife or gives you your husband or gives you your children? Celebrate it now and then it will happen. Somebody say a loud amen. War, celebrate the prophecy. Celebrate and praise God in advance for the prophecies fulfillment. Number one, number four, war with number three, war with the prophecy unto fulfillment. War with the prophecy unto fulfillment. First Timothy chapter one verse eighteen. He said, this charge I commit unto you, my son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on you, that you might by them war a good warfare. By them. He said, and this thing implies two things. You war to make the prophecy come to pass. And you use the prophecy to fight. Hello? That is the prophetic decrees. You fight the enemy from preventing it from happening. And also you use the prophetic declaration to make your case. By them you might war. That how do you war with the, by them? It is my year of greater glory. God spoke it to me. From the book of Haggai chapter 2. From verse 6, 7, 8, 9. That the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. First of all, he, he spoke it from the mouth of his servant. Secondly, I saw it in scripture. It is there. Therefore, I am set for greater glory. I believe the Lord. I believe his word. I believe his decree. Greater glory is my portion. No devil can bury my life in shame and bury my destiny in shame. This year is my year. It is whose year? If it is your year, you will shout the loudest. Amen. So you war with the prophecy. You declare the prophecy in the face of the opposition that was how david declared words in front of goliath uh, you come against me and i come against you in the name of the gods of the armies of israel whom you have defied you declare you speak the prophetic word out now a weapon you do not possess you cannot use hello a weapon you do not possess you cannot employ a weapon you do not possess, you cannot engage. I was watching the clip of a, a, a younger soldier who was literally running from the battlefield the other day. It was, he watched it. And this young man said, they gave me this to go and face people who are three times this size. I don't know who sent it to me. That is, he said, we are ready to finish the, those people if we have something bigger. Am I communicating? 
In other words, if I had a bigger weapon, I will engage it. A weapon you don't possess, you cannot employ. Second, a weapon you don't understand, you cannot maximize. You are able to maximize a weapon that you understand. In fact, a weapon you don't understand can be dangerous. Why do I say so? Many of us here now, this year's declaration, you are not aware of the content. It's our year of greater glory. Uh -huh. What else? Under that greater glory, what am I expecting? They just outlined it now. That is a greater dimension of peace and a greater that you should you should know it until you own it. It was not just spoken for entertainment purpose. You know it until you own it. And I said it is a weapon you possess that you can engage. It is a weapon you understand that you can maximize. So this is your assignment tonight. When you go back home, look at your crossover note. And take a look at all the declarations that, was, that were made in the note. And begin to engage them and employ them. If it is my year of greater honor. I, didn't, I haven't even had ordinary honor yet. Not to talk of greater honor. So I need to be shifted to honor. And then to be shifted to the greatness of it. And then God gave us a word. He said it's going to be things are not going to, hap to be happening at normal frequency. Instant action. Very rapidly. And then he showed us with snails that were, were under the burnt paper that night. How many of you remember that? Hallelujah. So you war with the prophecy. You possess. You, you, you know it until you own it. The exact things God said. What he said he will do. And then you follow it up. Until you see it come to pass. Lift your right and say, Father, help me, Lord, in Jesus' name. And finally, you accelerate prophetic fulfillment. First, believe the prophet and the prophecy. Second, celebrate and pray God in advance for the prophecy's fulfillment. Three, war with the prophecy unto fulfillment. And of course, you know what I mean now. You own it, then you use it. And then number four, obey prophetic injunctions or rather obey prophetic conditions unto prophetic manifestation obey prophetic conditions unto prophetic manifestations or prophetic fulfillment most divine provisions are connected to conditions Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 to 3 said if you shall hug him diligently and he came, and it shall come to pass if he shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command you this day that the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth and all this blessing shall come on you and overtake you if thou if, 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 if there are conditions even to be born again, repent and forsake your sins. That's the most salvation is a free gift, but it has conditions attached still. So, are you of greater glory? What were the conditions? Can you place it on the screen for us? The conditions for the manifestations of the secret of the greater glory. Number one is passion for God. If you are, if you want to, if you want to see the glory of God you should you refuse to be a nominal Christian don't just be a, 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 a church goer a non-serious Christian someone whose Christianity nobody takes serious there are people their neighbors don't think they are Christians at all they are even surprised that they are inviting them to church your passion for God must be contagious it must be infectious the people who know you must know you with God. Passion for God. Number two was 
following God's pattern or plan for your life. What God wants to do, not doing what you want with your own life, but asking God and following his pattern. Number three was praising God in the beauty of holiness. That was what made the glory to come down in the temple of Solomon, the, in the beauty of holiness. And finally, number four, it was unconditional obedience to God's word. John chapter 2, verse 5. Unconditional obedience. Whatsoever he said unto you, do. And then, if you will do whatsoever he says to you to do, you will see results. Combine that. Okay, that's right. Number 5 was faith in God's ability. Faith in... Alright, keep going. I'm, I'm sure that I'm mixing the two up. Faith in God's ability that God is able I like you to mix this with the conditions for answered prayer because we are we are we are praying for the things God said to come to pass you can place that on the screen for right now the conditions for answer prayer mix the two together and then you have a perfect package Number one was faith in God. We, de we dealt with that on the first day of the fast. Faith in God was a condition for answered prayer. Number two was the forgiveness of sins. And then the forgiveness of others. And then bearing and sustaining fruit. The winning and establishment of souls. Merge the conditions together. And receive the grace to follow the conditions. And you will see the results. Faith in God, like we said, the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of others, the bearing and the establishment of fruit. He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. That you should go and bear fruit. John 15, 16. So that, that, was so, and that your fruit should remain. Don't just win the souls. Keep them established. So that whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. You want my word to you to come to pass and you are asking me for it. Establish the souls and he will give it to you. Beloved, without doubt, this year shall be a different year. The prophecies must come to pass. Do you believe that at all? Do you believe that at all? Then you will stand up with a louder shout of amen. amen. Loud most shout of amen. Lift up your two hands everywhere you are. And let's appreciate the King of Kings. Be upstanding. Appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's worship him. Let's honor him. Let's adore him. Father, thank you. And thank you. And thank you. In the name of Jesus. Lift your two hands and say, Father, thank you.